Good morning, friends, and welcome to Wake Up in the Word as we're wrapping up this week and wrapping up February of 2024. And I've got the good cup from Barney's Cafe in Mount Airy, North Carolina. Go visit all the Andy Griffith stuff up there sometime when you're going through that particular part of the country and stop in to Barney's Cafe. You'll be glad you did. Well, listen, we want to take a step back into the way families used to look because those biblical models seem to have been working pretty well until everyone told us, nope, you shouldn't do it that way. Let's make something else most important, more important than family. Let's make our corporate identity the most important. How about our international identity as world citizens and our relationship to Mother Earth to worship this green agenda that is being put before you and understand that you are just a cog in that wheel and you're not supposed to be focusing on your own marriage and a family. Well, what happens when society does that? Well, it collapses. And some interesting, I guess, pictures of that going on around the world today are showing entire civilizations that have really made this world what it is beginning to shrink on their way to disappearing because all of a sudden people no longer want to get married and have families. Paul told Timothy that in the last days there would be people preaching all kinds of strange and foreign doctrines, including forbidding marriage. What's that all about? Well, we're hearing some folks today that are actually saying marriage is a symbol of the old way and uh, someone is going to say marriage is racist before it's over with, but at least ma marriage is bad. You shouldn't get married. Get away from that. Don't be tied to another human being. You need to be free. And if you're going to be free, you sure don't want to be tied down with kids. You want to do as you please, you know, just kind of be happy and and uh, experience life and die and it'll be all over with. And don't worry about the next generation. That's just the opposite of what God gave us from the beginning. And from the beginnings, part of what we have in this passage we've just finished up. I want to stay in it one more day because I want to read to you a devotional thought from Dr. Tony Evans as well. Because as we look at this, this is not optional. This is God's plan. And if you're not specifically within the plan of being married and creating a family yourself, it's up to you to support those who are, because the whole purpose is to raise the next godly generation. Well, as we closed out chapter 5, um, we ran into verse 28, where it said, In the same way husbands are supposed to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. No one ever hates his own flesh, but provides and cares for it, just as Christ does for the church, And since we are members of his body. And in verse 31, we go back to the beginning, quoting from Genesis, where Paul writes, For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two, the two will become one flesh. This mystery is profound, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. To sum up, each one of you is to love his wife as himself, and the wife is to respect her husband. Now, for some folks, they really get confused about that last statement, the wife is to respect her husband, and we're going to get into that in just a little bit, but listen to the just the commentary on verse 33. God has created husbands to lead and wives to respond. And when a woman sees her man imitating, owning responsibility, treating her as special, and sacrificing for her well-being, she's apt to respond to him with heartfelt respect and submission. Now, when a car is out of alignment, its tires are going to wear unevenly, and getting new tires won't fix the problem. Many married people think that if they could just find a new mate, their problems would go away, but that's not the answer. If kingdom husbands and wives expect to draw on their heavenly blessings, they must align their roles in the family according to God's good design through love and respect. 
Well, what about this thing of a wife respecting her husband? Shouldn't a wife also love her husband? There are some things that go without saying in Scripture that command for us to love everyone. How does Dr. Evans put this in perspective? Listen to this particular devotion on kingdom family living entitled, The Sacrifice of Love. He says, God commands husbands to love their wives. However, he never instructs a wife to love her husband. Instead, wives are commanded to respect them. Well, this may seem like an odd way to address the subject of love, but God isn't saying that women should dismiss the commandment to love. Rather, God is love, we hear in 1 John 4, 8. And his love lives within all of us. Therefore, we are all commanded to love one another with the love of Christ. From God's perspective, a woman's love is a response to her husband's salvation and the love he gives to her. If husbands are going to be biblical lovers, they must also become biblical saviors. You see, Jesus Christ died for us not because we were lovable, but in order to make us lovable. Hmm. The Bible says Jacob loved Rachel so much he worked 14 years to gain her hand. Find that story back in Genesis 29. That's a high price to pay, but it's a reasonable price tag for love. Too many men want to run away from their wives when there's a problem. But if there were no problems, if your wife were perfect, she wouldn't need a Savior. Christ looked at us in our mess and said, you have a Savior, here I am. So kingdom man, if there is no sacrifice, there is no love. Now a husband who truly loves his wife says, if you want out of this marriage, you're going to have to leave me because I'm not going anywhere. No matter how you treat me or what happens, I want you to know that you have a Savior. And only a man who has abandoned himself to a kingdom agenda rather than a personal one can make this level of, of commitment. Wow, that's talking about a level of commitment we don't see much in men these days. A total commitment to your wife and to your family that says, I'm going to see it through regardless of what happens. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be the support. I'm going to be the lead. And I'm going to make sure this family is successful and that the children we raise in this family are going to see what sacrificial love really means. Wow, what it would, be, would it be like if all of us guys were that way in our relationships and our marriages? Well, you'll notice I'm preaching to the guys a lot today. I'm not going to preach to the girls so much. But guess what? Nowadays, we have a new problem. How do you find someone that wants to be involved in a kingdom relationship? I've watched several... YouTube shorts, TikTok videos, whatever, of some of these gals going online and saying, I can't find a good guy to marry. And you know, and as they begin to rant and rave about this, and you look at the way they're dressed, the way they're tattooed, the way they're, well, you know, just go on and on. Everything about their manner and demeanor is telling me, I wouldn't want to marry you either. I wouldn't even want to be caught on a date with you. I might be afraid for my life. <laughs> so, you know, we've got girls complaining they can't find guys to marry. Then you turn around and find guys saying, you know, none of these girls are fit to marry. Let me ask you a question. Where are you looking for a spouse? I'll tell you where I found one. At church with kingdom people who had the same kingdom agenda and the values that come with the Bible, God's holy word. And because of that, we've had what the world would call a successful marriage. Now, when you get right down to it, it's passed along even to your children. Where did our daughters find their spouses? Well, the first ones they looked for were, yes, in the church youth group. <laughs> and, and guess what? When they went off to college, what were they looking for? Because these values had been passed along to them. They were looking for someone who would be that Christian leader. And they found him in both of those cases. And they found him by serving, singing together in ministry teams and working at the schools that they were attending, which were, in both cases, two separate Baptist colleges. Friends, it's still not a secret 
where you find the best people that want to be in these kind of relationships. Go look in the body of Christ for the people that want to live like this. And you too can have a successful marriage and a successful family. Well, God bless you. We'll close with that note today and get back next week to the rest of the book of Ephesians as we wake up in God's word. Come on and join me. In the meantime, you worship with God's people this weekend and have the inspiration you need to see it through. God bless you.